Chapter 20 Git Checkout In the previous chapter, we used the git switch command to create a branch and switch to it, or in other words, make it active by moving the head label to the tip of this branch. We already mentioned that git only does a couple of things, and the various commands are typically just ways to combine those different things, and the git switch command is a good example to illustrate this. As we've learned in chapter 18, we can use git branch to create a branch. However, we also learn that this does not make that branch active. In other words, it does not move the head label to it, which is why git switch is handy, because it does that for us. But git switch is not special. All it does is combine git's basic operations in a way that saves us some typing. In the case of creating a branch and switching to it, we can accomplish the same by executing two commands in a row. First we run git branch my dash feature to create a new branch, then we run git checkout my dash feature to make the branch active. It's that second command, git checkout, that we're going to talk about in this chapter, because it's one of git's core functionalities that you should really understand. In chapter 12, we learned about the staging area. We learned that git add adds things to the staging area, while git commit adds them to the DAG or index. But so far, we've only learned how to add data to git. The question is how to get it back out hasn't come up yet. The git checkout command reads data from the DAG or index and puts it on our file system. There is no staging area when we read from the DAG. Only when we write does the staging area come into play. So whenever we want to go the other way, and have our local file system replicate a particular commit, commit in the DAG, we use the git checkout command. We're at a particularly good point to illustrate this, because we're currently at the my-feature branch, which is two commits ahead of the main branch. Furthermore, doing those two commits, we created a new file called feature.md. No such file exists on the main branch. So before we do anything, let's do a quick ls, or look at the directory contents to see what files are currently on our file system. As expected, we have a feature.md file and a hello.md file. And yes, the .git folder is also there, but that's a hidden folder that we know about because we're quickly turning into git wizards here. But we don't take that into account. All right, so now let's make the main branch active by issuing the command git checkout main. Git will tell us something like switch to branch main, which is nice of Git, and tells us that the head label is now on the main branch. But moving labels is not the only thing Git has done. If you run ls again, you will see that the feature.md file is gone. All that we're left with is the hello.md file, which on one hand might seem scary that things can just disappear like that. On the other hand, when we think about it, we've asked Git to go back to the main branch and the tip of the main branch never had this file to begin with. So git reads from the DAG and makes sure that our file system is exactly like it was when we made that last commit on the main branch. If we want to go back to the my-feature branch, we can do so with git checkout my-feature command. However, let's apply some of what we've learned here and just use git switch my-feature instead. Sure enough, Git has switched to, or activated, the my-feature branch again by moving the head label to it. And if we run ls again, we once again have two files, hello.md and feature.md. So, when we use git switch here, it calls git checkout under the hood, because git checkout is the only command that will actually read data from the DAG and make sure to restore the file system to the state it was at that point. The git checkout command can not only check out branches. You can also check out a specific commit by passing it commit ID or a tag, which is something we haven't talked about yet, but we will later. For now, think of a tag as a label that does not need to be on the tip of a branch, but can go anywhere. One bonus feature is that git checkout has up its sleeve is that it can also create branches. To do so, use the minus B flag followed by the branch name. So when we used git switch minus c my dash feature earlier to create a branch with git switch and its minus c flag for create we could have also ran git checkout minus b my dash feature instead 
The results would have been exactly the same, but ultimately only git branch can create a branch. All these other commands just reuse the same trick by calling git branch under the hood. Why is the flag to create a new branch minus C when we use git switch and minus B when we use git checkout? I don't know. But what I do know is that this is part of why people get frustrated with git because yes, it is not easy to remember all of the commands and their feature flags. But if we start to understand what Git is doing under the hood, then it doesn't really matter all that much. When you want to create a branch, you can do so with whatever command you like best. The choice is yours.